No? Okay. Let's that, give you an example. Um, when you walk on a bridge, right? Then when you when you walk on a bridge, then uh, please may not be a good, good, a good example. A good example is bridge is also a good example. When you walk up, uh, in a, a bridge, your your walking steps, your walk, walking steps, if the frequency of your walk, walking step is the same as bridge frequencies, then what happens? Huh? You will destroy the bridge, right? Because you oscillate the bridge. Okay. Now, that's. But when you when you walk in frequencies not the same as the the bridge, then then it's nothing will happen, right? That because the energy of of the uh, of your your walking does not flow to the bridge. Right? That makes sense. Because uh, the energy, the, the A students and B students, the uh, the walking step is not the same frequencies, then then they, their energy will cancel each other. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, so in my system here, if my KC is very rigid, and uh, this is very rigid then this MC will just keep oscillating with this system. Agree? Alright. this. If this is my system, um, this is the system, if my MC is just a rigid MC, and uh, this is just a line a rigid, then this one will oscillate if this one has energy. If this one is has, has, has if this one has vibration, so and this one, this MC will will vibrate with the system, right? Agree? All right. How can I design an MC which I don't want to vibrate with this system? Then I have to have a spring and have the zeta c. If I don't have zeta c, if I have only spring. I have our spring. Then this one and that one will keep just oscillating, right? And so if I have this, the energy has to move to me first. So I can I can try to, to take that energy out. How can I make sure my the energy of system move to energy of this? MC. That means my spring and that spring, the design of this spring and that spring, the frequencies should be very close. So that system will oscillate this system, and this because this system oscillates this system, that will take out the energy. This is the one take out the energy. Does you understand that? In other words, I have to have some motion, relative motion here, so that I can have this test part to take out the energy. So it's, it's just like you want to work on the system. If I have a test part, then I don't worry about the, uh, because the, uh, the bridge vibration energy would, would be taken out by me if I have a test part. If I don't, then then you will break the the, the, the the bridge. So next time if you go to walk the bridge, bring the test part with you. Then you won't worry about to break the bridge. Agree? Huh? No? You do? You understand? Okay. So you hide in my foot. I put a test part in my foot and I walk. You know, everybody walk with me together, you know, we have uh, the same frequencies, the bridge won't break. 
know why? Because I have a best part to take out the energy for you. You understand now? Good. But if you have a best part, then you don't walk. Uh, you don't walk. You don't walk the way. You don't walk the way to to have the same frequency as the bridge. And it doesn't do any good. Understand? I hope so. Okay, that's the deal here. So this is the second point here. This uh, we call frequency matched ABA controller. In other words, I want to design an ABA controller that the frequency matched to that frequency, so that this one, the test part, will work better. That's what we call frequency match. Okay, I think that's that's the ABA. I think you have learned enough the ABA. Uh, of course, that if if I want to show you all the necessary uh, steps, then it will take more than two weeks to do this. I didn't do that. I just showed you some basics of the ABA. Okay, you have any uh, any question you want to ask about ABA? Well, I think you, 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 the best way to do it is to go home and do your homework by yourself. Then, uh, then, uh, then you will do better. Uh, this is uh, really the really called virtual passive controller. Uh, and ABA, and sometimes some people call ABA. I think I better write ABA for you so that you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. ABA in active. This is the same as uh, virtual pass control. Okay, that's about the same thing. Uh, some people like to call it VA, uh, you know, but in, in terms of the uh, the real terminology should be virtual passive control. That's what it means. Okay, now let us go. Now the next uh, thing is let's see what is next. That's next. Okay, let's this going. Mm, this this part here. Okay. The next subject we going to discuss about the state space models. Uh, the state space model and uh, the model we are talking about today or in the past uh, month or month and a half uh, we'll share the differences. Uh, if you have ever taken a control class, you probably uh, have heard about the uh, state space models. What do we mean state space models? Uh, the double E people, uh, the uh, people, the researchers in the double E electrical engineering, they always talk about state space model. Uh, that's what we are talking about today. And well, I will, when we go on, I will tell you the differences between the continuous time model. In this, we are going to talk about the discrete time model, and then the observable model, and then final difference model. All these four different models, yeah, you can transform from one model to another model. 
So far, we give this class, all we use only continuous time map. All we so we learn just continuous time map. We did not ever discuss the discrete time model yet. And we don't discuss the observable model. We, didn't, we don't talk about finite difference model. But all those, every model is important in the control design because today there's only very few cases we use continuous time model. All control design because our the computer is a digital computer. So we have to talk about this discrete time model and we have to use this discrete time model to design our controller. And then observer model, regardless of what controller you are using, as long as you use a discrete time model, then you need to use observer model to estimate your state. So observer model is to do to, to be used to estimate your state for your for your feedback. So we will we will talk about that. Continuous model, let us talk about rich value. Well we we already discussed this, this rich value uh, rich body motion already. And we so far we talk about second order equation of motions. Uh, this first order equation of motion is W dot equal to V and V dot equal to U and this is our matrix equation of motion. And this is the state space model. Alright, and that we discussed about this already uh, in, in uh, earlier time. And the 0, 1, 0, 0 here if we, we can write this in terms of, if we look at this model, it's really the simplest model you ever have. So we can de design, we can say this x dot equal to ax plus du. And this is the state equations. Uh, that A is 0, 1, 0, 0. And that B is 0, M inverse. That's my B. And that we call state equations. All right, and that state equations, we have a state matrix. And this A, A we call state matrix. This we call state matrix. And this B, we call input matrix. 